Hello friends, welcome back to another video of Learn Biochemistry. This is the second video of cell series lectures. In the first video, we have discussed about cell and subcellular organelles. We also learned what are the advantages of having various organelles. If you have not watched that video, I would like to suggest you go and watch that video. The link of that video will be in the description box. So please do not forget to check that out. In today's video, as you can assume from the name on the slide, our topic of discussion will be nucleus. So without wasting any time, let's get started. In today's presentation, we are going to discuss about the structure of nucleus, its function and some diseases related to nucleus. Nucleus is the largest subcellular organelle. It is usually present at the center of a cell. Whereas most eukaryotic cells have nucleus, there are few examples which are devoid of nucleus. Most noticeable among them is the mature erythrocyte. Mature RBCs get rid of nucleus during later stages of maturation to make room for more hemoglobin in its cytoplasm. Thus, this is more of a functional adaptation. Another example of enucleated cell is the superficial dead layer of skin that is stratum corneum. Whereas most cells have one nucleus, finding multiple nucleus is not uncommon. Under most circumstances, finding multinucleated cell is a pathological sign. Multinucleated giant cells are often formed as a result of chronic inflammation. However, they can be found physiologically as well. The best example is the skeletal muscle cells which are multinucleated. In the next slide, we will discuss the structure of nucleus. Nucleus is a spherical organelle present in the center of a cell. Nucleus is surrounded by a double membrane known as nuclear envelope. The outermost membrane is continuous with rough endoplasmic reticulum, whereas the inner membrane is known as perinuclear membrane. Now this nuclear envelope is not continuous and at places there are gaps. These gaps are known as nuclear pore complex. So through these pores various substances enter or leave the nucleus. And the function of nuclear envelope is to separate nucleus from the rest of the cell. The second structure is nucleoplasm. It is the ground substance present inside nucleus. This nucleoplasm contains the genetic material DNA. Now DNA is not present alone and it is always present in association with proteins. These proteins can be histone proteins and non-histone proteins. So protein can be histone or non-histone proteins. These proteins helps in compaction or condensation of chromatin. So basically what is chromatin? Chromatin is the name given for the combination of DNA and protein. And the protein part helps in compaction of DNA. So depending on the level of compaction, chromatin can be loosely dispersed or it can be in or it can be in condensed form. When it becomes very condensed, it becomes visible under electron microscope that can be seen during mitosis as chromosomes. So Chromosomes is nothing but highly condensed chromatin. 
so during mitosis chromatins become visible as chromosomes now depending on the level of condensation chromatin can be of two types euchromatin or heterochromatin now euchromatin is loosely packed chromatin whereas heterochromatin is highly compact form of chromatin because euchromatin is loosely packed the various regions that needs to be accessed by transcription machinery becomes available hence euchromatin is transcriptionally active and heterochromatin because it is highly compact the various areas remain hidden from the transcription machinery and heterochromatin becomes transcriptionally inactive so i hope you have understood the difference between euchromatin and heterochromatin now another thing i want to mention here is that nucleus is not the only organelle of a cell that contains dna dna can be present in other organelles as well in animal cells dna can be present in mitochondria and in plant cell it can be present in chloroplast now the last structure i want to mention is the nucleolus the nucleolus is a dense structure present inside nucleus and it often lies adjacent to the perinuclear membrane so adjacent to the perinuclear membrane the function of nucleolus will be discussed with the function of nucleus nuclear core complex that we have discussed in the previous slide are the passage through which nuclear trafficking takes place nuclear trafficking means the movement of substance in and out of the nucleus thus trafficking is bidirectional in nature the substances that enter into the nucleus are those which are required for various processes that takes place in the nucleus we know some important events takes place inside nucleus what are those these are replication transcription post transcriptional processing and all these processes require various enzymes and proteins since they are proteins they are formed in the cytoplasm by ribosomes and then they are imported via the nuclear pore complex into the nucleus and what are the substances that are exported out of the nucleus these are basically the product of all the processes that takes place inside nucleus thus this includes mrna trna rrna and ribosomes they are formed inside nucleus and then they travel via the nuclear pore complex into the cytoplasm where they take part in various steps of protein translation thus proteins for replication and transcription are imported whereas mrna trna and ribosomes are exported let us now discuss the functions of nucleus nucleus is the organelle which contain the genetic material of organism that is dna 
important events related to the DNA metabolism takes place inside nucleus. Thus, the functions of nucleus are these processes that takes place inside nucleus. DNA is the storehouse of genetic information. In DNA, this information is stored as the nucleotide base sequence. However, DNA directly does not control genotypic traits or function of a cell. It is expressed in the form of protein which then decides the function of an organism. Behind every function of an organism, there is one or more proteins. Thus, although the starting point is DNA, the end point is protein. That is, the information is finally expressed in the form of protein. This is called gene expression. Naturally, the question is how the nucleotide sequence containing the genetic information is ultimately conveyed to the amino acid sequence of protein. The central dogma of molecular biology describes how genetic information flows from DNA into protein. So according to central dogma, during cell division, DNA first gets duplicated by a process known as replication. In replication, DNA makes a copy of its own. In the next step, the information in the nucleotide sequence of DNA is passed into the trinucleotide sequence of mRNA. This trinucleotide sequence is known as codon and the process that conveys information from DNA to RNA is known as transcription. In the final stage of gene expression, the trinucleotide sequence determines the amino acid sequence in the final protein product and the process by which this takes place is known as translation. Thus, in the expression of gene, transcription is the first stage whereas translation is the final stage. And out of these three events, replication and transcription occurs in nucleus whereas translation occurs in cytoplasm on the surface of ribosomes. Thus, the functions of nucleus can be summarized as DNA replication which is copying of DNA, transcription which is synthesis of different types of RNAs from DNA. One more thing, various post-transcriptional processing also takes place inside nucleus. And I would like to mention one important thing here, this function of nucleolus. Nucleolus is the site where rRNA is synthesized and processed and finally the ribosome is assembled inside nucleolus. Thus, nucleolus is a very important part of nucleus. Now let us proceed to the disease of nucleus. Before I name the disease, let me show you a picture of a film. So this movie has the central character who has a disease of nucleus and the character was played by none other than Amitabh Bachchan. Let me end the suspense and name the disease. The name of the disease is Prozeria, which is a disease of nuclear membrane. In the next slide, we are going to discuss more about Prozeria. Let us talk about Prozeria. A better name will be hutchinson guilford Prozeria syndrome. In short, HGPS. The children suffering from HGPS have features of early aging or you can say accelerated aging and they have reduced lifespan. Thus, these children usually have various signs and symptoms of 
old age present at very early stage what are these features so they usually have hair loss then you can see bulging of eyes there is pinched nose wrinkling of skin delayed tooth formation high pitched voice there is accelerated atherosclerosis osteoarthritis cardiovascular events stroke all these are features of hutchinson dilford rosaria syndrome and they often die at their teenage often because of stroke or cardiovascular events so what is the biochemical defect in these children this patient usually have a mutation in lamin a gene so what is lamin a lamin a basically is a component of nuclear lamina now the nuclear lamina is a structure present just underneath the nuclear envelope and it gives structural support to the nucleus when there is a mutation in lamin a gene there is defect in nuclear lamina and nucleus cannot maintain its shape as a result nucleus become distorted or misshapen and this distorted nucleus in turn leads to features of accelerated aging that is found in hgps there is no cure of this disease and as i have mentioned they die at very early in their life i would like to record a separate video on hgps where i will discuss this topic in more depth so please stay tuned for this video that is about to be released in next week with that i would like to conclude this video here if you have liked this video do not forget to support this channel by liking this video you can also give your feedback by commenting in the comment section thank you for watching